Hey, welcome to Never Stop Building. I am Jason. Little quick project here. I got this pressure washer off of Facebook Marketplace. I paid 500 bucks for it. The guy said the pump doesn't work. Um, and he really did not he really did not seem to know what he was doing, even though he runs a pressure washing business. I don't think he knows how to fix stuff because it's all sorts of jacked up. Uh, I was going to try to rebuild the pump, but the very helpful people at the service center, which is literally right around the corner, said that you know they could get parts, but they don't know. You know, if it's something else breaks, it's like a big thing. And you know, obviously they're in the business of selling stuff. So we got a new pump and some other parts it was missing. So we got all the parts we need. You know, it's the kind of thing where like I could rebuild it and I could probably spend four or five hundred dollars on parts to rebuild it. Or I could get a more expensive brand new pump that they know where the parts are. They could fix it. It's under warranty. It's basically a new pressure washer. Uh, this brand is pretty unknown. The guy said it's kind of like an easy clean, an older easy clean. We can't find anything about this. So if anybody knows you know, if, they, if anybody happens to have one of these Yokohumas and it has a manual or something, please hook me up. Engine runs fine. It's some sort of knockoff Honda engine, uh, but it starts right up. You know, seems to work. The guy said the thing froze. Uh, the pump may have froze. This was this was fine because we pressure tested this heater uh, before we bought it. The wiring is is a pretty much of a, dis a disaster. So we're gonna we're gonna tune this guy up. We'll get this give this guy a second life, and then we'll uh, hopefully pressure wash itself and make it nice and clean. Uh, also, it took a spill, I guess, off his truck. So I gotta weld that wheel back together. I did not pay this much. I did not pay six thousand dollars. And he said a new machine with this sixteen horsepower would be like nine to ten thousand dollars new. So. For 500 bucks and you know a thousand dollars in parts, I think we're gonna have a pretty nice pressure washer. So why don't we start by fixing this wheel? Okay, we have our wheels on now, and now we're underneath this rat's nest, trying to figure out. We we got a here. I'm gonna turn this light on. We got a thermostat up here. I'm guessing this white wire goes to that. That must fire this contactor, which these wires come over here, and we have a motor. We have probably a power input. That's probably the igniter. Oh wow, this is bright. And then there's this, which I'm guessing powers the pump 
to spray the fuel in. So this is going to be a bit of a diagnosis situation. I guess we'll test each component individually and see that everything works. Got a okay, here's igniter. This is igniter. What's this? Blower fan? And what's this? This seems to be the brains of the operation. The old bailing wire and nut holder. There we go. Now let's take this off. All right, what I got here, power strip, extremely dangerous bare AC wires. So this is wired to the blower motor. So these are not going to touch. And I can verify the blower motor works. So let's turn this on and see what happens. Cool. The blower motor works. All right, now I've wired up what I believe is either a fuel pump or a fuel solenoid. So let's see if that works. That makes a sound. Okay, so it must be a solenoid. It must just be sort of sucking the fuel in there. Okay, I have uh, wired up the igniter now. This is a little scary. I don't hope that nothing blows up. I'm guessing I should hear an arc when I turn this on, so let's try it. Oh, I hear an arc. I don't want to blow this up. All right, so it looks like we got solenoid works, arc and the igniter, and the blower motor works. Now, I don't know what, I know that there's a pressure switch and I know that there is a thermostat. This whole contactor thing, which is probably common, this is probably similar to other contactors. Uh, it's just like a little confusing when you see the wires the way they are. I'm sure I can figure that one out, but, um, because there was a bolt that seemed to be pushing this down, I have a sense that based on what the old pump looked like, the pressure switch went bad. What they would, what they did is they just, they just turned the machine on and plugged it in and that just turned on everything and it wasn't dependent on the pressure being there. I mean, this, the guy I bought this from was definitely not a mechanical guy, but, uh, he was a pressure washer guy and he seemed fairly nice and he let us pressure test the heater. So, I don't think he was trying to rip me off. I just don't think he knew how to fix this stuff. So I guess the next test is going to be a quick heater check. I'll wire everything up and not include the pressure switch. So I'll have fuel, spark, and blower, the three things you need for combustion. And then when I turn that switch on, I imagine I should be blasting flame out the top of this thing. So I'll probably have to turn it off very quickly because I don't want to burn that up. All right, there's fuel in the tank. I got all my wires wired up. Let's see if this thing fires up. Whoa! Instantly. Oh, that's great. That's what I'm talking about. And I got this contactor wired up. <clears throat> A1 and A2 are now on AC. So let's see what happens there. the contactor works. I guess we have two control items. Well, technically there's three control items. There should be a manual switch, a pressure switch, and a thermostat. I just bought a new pressure switch. I should test the thermostat next. And I need to add a manual control switch. And then at least we know what components do what. And I think then we can figure out a new circuit and rewire all this nonsense. How are we going to test the thermostat? Well, I have this continuity tester. And right now, I don't know if you can see this, but there's a little doodad here. Right now it's open. And it's not closed. If this... That's the thing that moves, I guess. So this is a normally closed... And this is a normally open. 
Now I wonder, I'm guessing that what happens is I heat it up, that little tube is like, uh, apparently there's oil in it. We should see that little guy move and then it should be, that normally closed should be open. I got a heat gun here and I'm just gonna hold it on where the, the thermostat wire is to simulate heat from the water. And I'm gonna watch to see if that thing closes. I think it closed. No, it hasn't closed yet. Oh yeah, it's not closed yet, it's just a shadow. I turned the thermostat down pretty low. I can't tell if that's moved or not. Maybe it's isolated. Or the thermostat's busted. This is my uh, educated guess. <sighs> the thermostat is normally closed, which allows power to the heater. Then the heater is on until the water gets too hot, whatever the thermostat is, and it shuts the heater off. Uh, now I guess I want to do some research, like if the fan should continuously be blowing, if the pump solenoid is the only thing that's controlled by the thermostat. So it's constantly blowing air through there, but it's not blowing fuel. So it's hard to test this without the thing running. But once I sort of understand the operation, we can get a circuit diagram together. All right, I think we got a diagram. I think we got a wiring diagram we can work with. So it's simplified, right? AC comes to the plug. There's a master switch. It goes to the thermostat. That's controlled uh, variable. That's normally closed. And then it goes to a pressure switch, normally open. So there has to be positive pressure, insufficient temperature, and the master switch has to be closed. And then it powers up the motor, the ignition, and the fuel solenoid. Now with a contactor involved, all those same control switches just go through A1 and out A2. That energizes the coil and close the three contactors, which just supplies AC power to those same three things. You know, in a, in a low voltage system, like if it was a 12 volt system, this would make more sense because you have a low voltage switching a high voltage. Um, I mean, I guess it makes sense here in, in so far as you have a low current draw sort of situation switching the higher higher current draw stuff um i mean the same thing as on my bandsaw you know it's all it's all ac control voltage um but because there's such a high current draw that's where you want the contactor to do the switching and you don't want to be touching a, a, a you know a flimsy little light switch that's going to arc if it has a lot of current draw uh this motor is 125 watts um the igniter, it doesn't say. I don't think there's a lot of current draw. And we got the thing to fire up just with the switch on that power uh, strip. So, you know, I probably should use a contactor. Probably don't need it. It has a contactor. So maybe someone smarter than me decided that that was necessary. Uh, hopefully it was someone at the factory and not someone after the fact. So I guess it's time to do some wiring. All the wiring is done and tested. Thing fires up with a pressure switch. Seems like we'll test the thermostat when it's going. I suspect if it heats the water hot enough, it will 
kill the heater. Uh, well, I don't know how I'm going to figure that out without destroying the heater. Now that the wiring is done, the real fun begins, which is putting in this new pump and then run some hoses and do some connections on the pump itself. All right, so the pump is prepped. I have to put oil in it. I'll do that before I run it. There's going to be a coupling that goes on here and this hose, which is the hose that, that connects the water to the heater. So I got to get that ready. Pump mounted. My goodness, pressure washing just became more expensive. Oh dear, I guess I need a new engine. Yikes. I don't think this is salvageable at this point. Uh. Well, that's a problem. All right guys, well, the pressure washer was great for a little while. But as you can see, it needs a bit more work. So I'm going to cut this video right about here. Uh, I have the rest of the story coming out in the next few days. Uh, so be sure to subscribe to the channel so you can get notified when that comes out. I hope you learned something. I definitely learned a lot here. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.